Well, welcome. We're going to do uh, work from page 388. And as you can see, I've already done 1, 3, and 5 on the screen. And you can um, check your answers as I discuss a few things with you. First of all, uh, on number 1, you want to make sure that you isolate the radical. This 3 is not the index number, so it does have to be pulled over to the right-hand side. And we're going to do so by dividing it um, and then continuing that process. Make sure you check all of your answers for extraneous roots. And in all of these, we didn't have one, so that was good. Uh, again, isolate the radical, then remove the radical by squaring it or cubing it, whichever the case, and then solving. Now let's take a look at question number seven. We do have some things about number seven that we didn't discuss in class, so please um, pay attention to this one because it is very different. Um, let's take a look at, first of all, we have rational exponents, and uh, again, we are going to use the IRS um, mnemonic device which is isolate the, the radical or rational, remove the radical or rational, and then solve and check. Um, in this one, the, the rational part has been isolated, so we can go on to step two, which is to remove. And we're going to take the reciprocal of the rational and raise it to that power, because in doing so, what you're going to see is you're going to see the um, exponents disappear on the right left hand side and that's because when you multiply a number by its reciprocal you get one now we did take the square and that's an even um, even root so keep in mind in class we talked about when that occurred we were going to wrap it up in absolute value symbols and this does make a significant difference to our answer because we wind up with two answers instead of one um, on that four I'm going to rewrite it as two squared. I'm going to raise it to the 3 halves power. And this is how you can do this without the calculators. The 2's will cancel off. And you're, you wind up with 2 cubed, which is 8. So the, um, the right hand side is 8, and the left side is still x plus 5, the absolute value. Now back to chapter 2, if you recall, when you're solving absolute value equations, you've got to rewrite those as two separate equations for the positive 8 and one for the negative 8. So we're going to solve these simultaneously. And on the left-hand side, we're going to get x is equal to 3. And on the right-hand side, we're going to get x is equal to negative 13. And then we do want to check both these roots back up into the original equation. And um, let's start with the 3. If you add 3 to 5, you get 8. And 8 raised to the 2 thirds power. Well, I'm going to write that 8 as 2 cubed raised to the 2 thirds power. And again, I'm going to wipe those 3's off. I get 2 squared, and 2 squared does equal 4. So that one does check out. With the negative 13, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to bring that negative 13 back up here, plug it in. When I do, I get negative 8. I'm going to change that negative 8 to a negative 2 raised to the 2 thirds excuse me, negative 2 cubed raised to the 2 thirds power. And as you can see again, those 3's wipe each other out. We wind up with negative 2 quantity squared. When you have negative 2 times negative 2, you wind up with 4. And that does satisfy that solution as well. So the two answers to this problem was x equals 3 and x equals negative 13. Now let's just take a look at number 9. Again, what we want to do is isolate the rational um, component. And so we are going to have to take that 3 and divide it out and bring it over to the right-hand side. As we do, now you can see I've raised and lifted that, um, that exponent to its reciprocal. That's how you remove a rational. And by doing so, you're just simply going to be um, canceling out your exponents all together, and you get x minus 2. And since that was a cube root, you don't have to worry about two answers or absolute value questions. So um, we'll just continue on. I'm going to, again, rewrite that 8 as a 2 cubed because it makes it much easier to simplify. It wipes those 3's out. We wind up with 2 to the 4th. If you do that out in your head mentally, you get 16. So x minus 2 is equal to 16. And then when we add 2 to both sides, we get x is equal to 18. And again, you'll want to check that out 
and um, make sure it does check. And let's do this mentally. 18 minus 2 is 16. We're going to write 16 as 2 to the 4th um, raised to the 3 fourths power. And again, those 2's cancel out. and We have that 3 sitting out there in the front, so let's put that in there. And we're wanting to make sure that this equals 24. Well, 2 cubed is 8. 8 times 3 is 24, so once again, it does check out. And we're going to do one more. Um, well, actually, let's just do, do both of these questions, and then we'll be finished with this video. Again, you can see we have to isolate the rational or the, the rational exponent. We're going to add two to both sides, lifting that rational exponent. We're going to take it to the two-thirds power. We don't need to worry about two answers there because that's an odd root. So those just simply cancel each other out. We're going to wind up with x plus one on the left. And uh, once again, I'm going to write that 27 as a perfect cube. And again, you've just got to get real flexible with these folks. So I'm going to wipe those two, those threes out. I'm going to wind up with 3 squared, which is 9. So we get x plus 1 is equal to 9. And then um, I'm going to add 1 to both sides, and we get x is equal to 10. Um, excuse me, we're going to subtract. Let's back that up. We're going to subtract 1 from both sides, um, and what the answer is 8. Then what we want to do is, again, go back in here, check it out. 8 plus 1 is 9. I'm going to write 9 as 3 squared raised to the 3 halves power minus 2. Does that equal 25? That's the question. Um, again, the 2's wipe out. You get 3 cubed, which is 27. 27 minus 2 does equal 25, and it does check. Let's take a look at 13 real quick. You can see that I've kind of already worked it out here. Um, you're given this formula. You're also given that the tank holds 15,000. That happens to be the volume, so you want to replace the V with 15,000. And now it's just a matter, again, of isolating the variable. You do so by taking the reciprocal of your constant here. And what you do to one side, you do to the other. You can see as a result of this product, I get 90,000 over pi. And then all of this will be done in your calculator. You want to raise that to the to the one-third power so that you can uh, remove the uh, cube there. And put, putting this into your calculator, you get approximately 30.6 feet. And that concludes this video.